Hey, what's going on YouTube? Just wanted to do a review for you guys on uh, a rifle that's not really covered in a lot of YouTube videos. I see a lot of other rifles, but you know, I don't really cover the Hakeem that much, so I figured we'd go over that a little bit today. I got a pretty nice one uh, uh, maybe two years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it's needed a lot of cleaning up to bring it back into uh, serviceable condition, but uh, it's a pretty cool gun. I like it. I want to go over it with you. Give you a little uh, history about Hakeem's. Uh, they were imported into the country about you know, 1980 sometime. Uh, they're made in a country called Egypt. Uh, they've, they're basically a copy of the uh, AG-42 Youngman rifle. Um, they work on the same principle, built on the same uh, machinery. Uh, they fire 8mm Mauser, 7.92 by 57mm, if you metric guys out there. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, uh, just want to go over field stripping, bolt disassembly, reassembly, and uh, loading the rifle. And uh, go over muzzle brake, end cap removal, and cleaning. So, hopefully we can get that all covered real quickly. So, we'll roll right into it. To disassemble the Hakeem, first make sure the weapon's unsafe. Take your finger slide and just cover forward. The catch in the back. Let's see if you can see it. Has a safe and fire position. You stick it in the center position, like so, and pull out the safety catch. Just like that. You're then going to uh, pull the bolt to the rear. So, and you can take the bolt out. So now you have your bolt carrier, bolt, and dust cover, and your magazine to stay in the rifle. So you can stick it off on the side. So we'll put it there. Put the camera back on. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. Okay. Move the rifle out of the way for now. Here's your bolt group. First thing you're going to do is you're going to want to remove the bolt out of the uh, dust cover. And you want to push it all the way back and rotate it uh, clockwise for me, counterclockwise to you. So, try to demonstrate that. Push the bolt back and you want to rotate it. so you guys can see what's going on. Push the ball back and rotate it out like so. Now you have your bolt. Now your bolt carrier and dust cover, as you can see here, uh, in order to remove that out of the weapon, or uh, in order to remove the bolt carrier out of the dust cover, what you have to do is put your hand right in front of it like so, and you're going to push that little catch right there. So go ahead and do that. And now your carrier and your recoil springs are now separate from the dust cover. Okay. Once you get all that stuff done, that out of the way. you can then uh, take your inner spring out of your outer spring and then separate the inner spring. Separate this into three pieces. Two inner springs are held together with like an aluminum uh, hollow tube. So there you go. That's that. Now, in order to disassemble the bolt, it's very simple. You have your extractor located right there. You just need a common flat blade screwdriver. Okay. You'll just hold it like that. Pry up on the spring to so pop it forward, just a tab. Alright, and then just push the spring forward with your thumb, and then you can lift 
extractor out like so. so. There you go. In order to remove the bolt, you have to tap that pin out of the bolt to remove the firing pin. So what I do is I just hold it in my hand like this. And I put the screwdriver on a pin. And I grab the butt of another screwdriver. Two taps. All it should take. And then the pin will come out of the bolt. You can take out the first part of the firing pin. It's a two-piece firing pin, as you can see there. Now this notch is kind of important when you're going to put it back together for orientation. And then flip it upside down. Give it a tap, and your firing pin and firing pin spring should come out. Okay. Reassembly is opposite. There's a hole in the back of the bolt right there. Take your pointy end of the firing pin. You're going to stick it on the spring, and then stick that in the bolt. Then you're going to take your second piece of your firing pin. Okay. With the uh, bolt facing up. You're going to stick it notch down into the firing, into the bolt and then push it down with your thumb or your finger. And you're going to take your pin, which as you can see has a notch on one end and then no notch on the other. Just take the non-notch side, stick it in. Now it'll hold the firing pin. All you have to do is tap that flush with the butt of a screwdriver or something. I just use the butt of a screwdriver. There you go. Look at that. Put your extractor back on. It's pretty simple. Just take the extractor, you stick it in the groove, and push it forward a little bit. And there you go. Take your extractor retaining spring. You'll slide it down. There's a little groove down there. You'll just push it in there. I just take my thumb, push it sideways. Let's give it a little push. There you go. Shazam. That's that. In order to put your spring back together, you just take one of your inner springs, and uh, I just turn it in the direction of the coiling, and then it goes right on there. You'll see people fidget with it sometimes. Just turn it in the direction of the coiling, and it'll go right. Now, your main spring. One end, this end, is slightly smaller diameter on the end. I don't know if you can really tell. The other end is open. Take the open end, stick the spring the inner spring inside the big spring and it won't fall through because it's pinched on the end. You'll then take your dust cover and you'll put the pinched end, okay, the end that the spring won't fall through, put it on the guide inside there just like that, okay? Now, set it on the table, grasp it here, don't grasp it in the back because the catch is there. You don't want the bolt flying off. Now there's two ways to do this. You can do it this way or you can actually stick the bolt and carrier back in the gun and then slide the cover on. I'll demonstrate both, but first the first way. You grab the, uh, the hole in the back of the bolt carrier right there. I don't know if you can really see it. There it is. Stick the spring inside of there like that, and just push the carrier on there. So you get it to about right there, and just push it back until you hear it click. Okay. Now, if you don't have really strong fingers, I wouldn't recommend this method. Well, it doesn't really bother me. So, so anyway, that's how you do that. And then stick the bolt back in. You take the bolt like this with it pointing away, and you slide it in first, and then just let it fall forward. But anyway, in terms of demonstrating for prosperity, I'll demonstrate the second method on reassembling this, which is easier, less of a chance of hurting yourself. You grab your firearm, okay? You got your firearm. Uh, you take your bolt. Carrier group. Make sure the bolt's all the way forward, not in the uh, block position. Stick it on the firearm. Push it all the way forward. Okay. And take your dust cover. 
feed the spring in, and you just take your hand like so, push forward till it clicks. Okay. Then you'll take your safety catch, push the safe fire lever in the center position, and drop your safety and block back on. What you only have to do is firmly grasp the dust cover, push the catch, let it slide back. Weapon is now reassembled. Okay. You don't want the weapon to sit decocked. Um, all you have to do is put it on fire, pull the trigger, put it back to safe. That's pretty much it. So we've gone over field stripping and a uh, little bit of history and uh, <clears throat> disassembling the bolt components and then putting it back together. So next thing we'll go over is uh, disassembling the muzzle brake using that tool. All right. Right here, we have the muzzle brake tool. This is actually a Youngman AG42 multi-tool that I picked up from a website called LibertyTreeCollectors.com. Great website. Got a lot of cool stuff. This thing isn't for the Hakeem, but it works like a champ. So, real quick, grab the camera. As you can see, there is a retaining clip that goes around the, uh, that holds the, uh, let's see if you can see it there. So there's where the spanner wrench goes and the retaining clip that goes around. So what you need to do is you take a screwdriver and you pop that clip up like so so you can get a screwdriver on it and you just pry the clip up and it falls out on the ground and you lose it forever. Seriously though, don't lose it. It's kind of an important piece. There it is. That's what it looks like. So now you're left with the muzzle brake cone that you need to remove. So, how you do that? Firmly grasp the weapon. Righty tighty lefty loosey. A lot of times you might have to lay the weapon down to do this. I just hold it with my finger, take my hand, and I give it a swift crack. And it'll come off. If you've never removed this before, say you just purchased a firearm, this is going to be ridiculous to remove. Just letting you know. Anyway, that's what it looks like. A lot of carbon will build up in there. A lot of little orifices to clean, threads. I'll show you what inside the muzzle cone looks like. The muzzle brake, I mean. Let's we'll see. You can see up in there. Oh. So we'll lift it up into the light a little bit. You can see mine's pretty clean. I keep it clean. Nobody likes a dirty muzzle brick. Anyway, it's important to clean this because you get a lot of pitting from using corrosive ammo. So it's a good idea to keep it clean. Now when you get to put it back on, it's the exact opposite. I always uh, stick it in there and then unscrew it the wrong direction until I feel the threads line up. These threads are kind of tricky sometimes. If you can see the notch right there, right there is the notch. You have to line that notch up. You don't want to go past that though. All you want to do is get the notch lined up. That's your sole purpose. It would help if I was going the right direction. Eh? All right, so we're just going to tighten it until that notch lines up. It doesn't take much. You want it to get just tight when it reaches that notch. You're then going to take the spring, right, and you're going to stick it back in there, right, and then you're just going to flip that spring down into the uh, groove cut into the muzzle cone. And now it's reassembled. So that's what you're looking for. Just get that notch lined up so that spring goes in and it's tight enough. Any tighter than that, you'll have a problem getting it off, guaranteed. Okay. Get it in. This tool right here, libertytreecollectors.com. Get it while you can. 
you'll probably never find a tool that will work better than the one that's in my hand. Who knows how long they'll be there. I would get one. Nine bucks. Awesome. Another quick thing I wanted to go over. I just want to make the video as quick as possible. I don't like prolonged YouTube videos. Uh, let's zoom out here. Slings for Hakeem's. A lot of people use uh, AK-47 slings. I found this really nice brand new Italian made. You know it's Italian. Uh, uh, M1 Grand Sling. And I like it because when I go to disassemble the weapon, all I have to do is this to uh, get the sling off. You know, just pop it off. It's got a little spring clip. It's pretty cool. So, it's a great sling for use on Hakeem's. Works good on other guns with similar sling fashioning. AK-47s, for example. So, anyway, I like it. Uh, yeah. So, it's got your typical V-notch rear sight. Graduated from one to a thousand meters. A globed front sight. I put a little white paint dot there to help me aim. It's windage adjustable. They also come in different sight heights. This is actually a Youngman front sight that I have modified through filing. Careful filing and shimming with a piece of metal in order for it to work on this weapon. I didn't modify the weapon at all, but I did come across these Youngman sights. So, good luck finding a different uh, height front post sight for Hakeem. So, sometimes you might have to get a little engineering, do a little engineering. I mean, anyway. So, uh, now we're going to go into loading the Hakeem real quick. Got a couple different choices when it comes to ammunition to feed into your brand new Hakeem. Okay, first and foremost, your venerable, venerable 1950s Yugoslavian. It's good stuff. Corrosive, yes, but uh, very good ammunition. Very accurate. Uh, works great in Hakeems. The gas setting: close your gas valve all the way, open it until the gun functions. Meaning, take one round at a time with the valve closed, load one round, fire it. If the bolt doesn't lock to the rear, increase your gas setting until you get the bolt to lock to the rear after firing the last round. Once you get to that, that's all you need. Only give it enough to operate the whip. That being said, 50s you go, awesome. 40s Turkish, not awesome. This stuff will damage the Hakeem. It's too hot. It has the wrong pressure curve for a semi-auto. Awesome for bolt action guns. Don't put it in a king. Word to the wise, not every Turkish bullet has the Cupro Nico jacket. Some of them have a copper steel core. Just keep that in mind. Make sure you're paying attention to the head stamp. If you can see it there. Yeah. See, it has the black primer. Uh -huh. That's the head stamp. You want to avoid while shooting it in a key. That's the head stamp you want for shooting it. 50s you go. Alright. Get these out of the way. I've also shot 1940s German steel cased with limited success. Want to see the green primer? Yes. That means lead inside. Misconception about German steel cased ammo is it's no good. Actually, it's very good. <laughs> you just can't shoot anything with a steel core because it's rusted to hell inside. If it has a lead core, it's not rusted inside. All the ammo I have is uh, early 1940s, probably 42 and back. Most of it being 1940. Good stuff. Shot hundreds of rounds of this. Anyway, if you don't like corrosive ammo, you have some other options, which I'll show you. Probably the best one out there is uh, Privy Partisan. Okay, Privy Partisan FMJ Bowtail 198 grain. New manufacturer, non-corrosive, very good, high quality, reloadable brass. 
If you're uh, thinking about getting into reloading Mausers, here's your chance. Fifteen ninety nine a box. It's expensive, yes, but uh, can you really put a price on not having to clean your gun after you shoot it? Uh, it's got the uh, NNY head stamp there. I don't know if you can really see it. I'm going to wait till the camera focuses on it. It's not going to focus on it. NNY 8mm Mauser. NNY stands is the uh, Serbian lettering for PPU, which would be pretty partisan. So there you go. This stuff, also awesome. Because this and this are the same. This is M49 ball. This is basically the modern equivalent of M49 ball. Comes in soft point and hollow point. Or uh, not hollow point, but full metal jack. Um, they're one of the only manufacturers that still make 8mm FMJ. Actually, I think they're the only one that I've seen. I think Seller and Below might. Or Fiochi or whatever their name is. But uh, very good. Very good stuff. So, anyway. On to loading the Hakeem. There's two ways to load the Hakeem. But before you load it, you always want to make sure it's unsafe. For the shooter facing the rear of the gun, when the safety catch is in the right position, or to the right, it is safe. Left is fire. Safe. Make sure it's unsafe. Open the action by pushing the cover forward. Pull the dust cover back. There should be some slop. Just like that. That's the bolt locked to the carrier hitting the safety block and the magazine catch. If you have it in fire, when you drop back, it's going to go. And you can be like, oh, what was that? There's not going to be any play at all. So put the weapon back on safe. Push it forward. That play will be there. Before you put a round in there, make sure you got that catch. Okay? Cool. Take your uh, strip clip. You're all familiar with strip clips. It's got three notches on it. If you can see the notches there. Just take the uh, first notch, stick it in the groove, push it down, load the rounds. Takes two, ten round mag. It's kind of finicky. The stupid, you have to, like, you know, let's, well, I'll get a close up for you guys. Let's see what I'm talking about right now. So there's your magazine guide. This is the worst part of the Hakeem. And there's your strip clip. You have to stick it in like that and then flick it down. You depress by pushing your thumb and you pull it up and out like so. That's how it works. So, kind of stupid, I know. To load the gun, you see you still got that play there. Alright, so to load the gun, let's stick it on fire. I don't know if you noticed that. We'll go back to make sure you noticed it. See, there's no gap right now. I'm going to stick it on fire. That's the cam in the safety end block. See that cam? Safe, flat, fire, half mooned. Let's see if you can really see it. Alright, when you hit fire, that half moon is now going to engage the catch. Okay? So, all you gotta do, pull it back. Just load it around. Okay? A lot of people use the uh, shell deflector as a uh, uh, kind of a charging handle. Uh, I don't, but uh, I'll get this round out of the chamber. Another way you can load it is put it on fire and use this as a charging handle, like so. In order to uh, remove the magazine, you have a magazine catch, all you gotta do, pull the catch, push forward, pull the magazine. The weapon is now magazineless. So there you go. I think that pretty much about covers everything today. I wanted to go over. Um, I think it adequately covered the things that I don't see on YouTube already for the Hakeem. There's a lot of good uh, guys that have videos, reviews of the Hakeem. There's a few, not a lot, but 
I figured I'd go over uh, some of the some of the stuff that I've learned about it. It's a really great gun. It's very accurate. Uh, I recommend getting one while you still can. Very rare. They only made like 80,000 of them. So get it while you can. Uh, it's a really underestimated firearm, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of people, will, you know, bought them in the 80s and kept it as a hog rifle or something. And, you know, they didn't clean them well. I'm lucky mine only had a light frosting in the bore. Doesn't really affect it at all. It's a very accurate gun. It's one of the most accurate guns I own, actually. So, if you don't own one or don't know much about it, or if you know somebody who has one, you know, maybe take them up on an offer. Go, go ask them if you can shoot it. Try it out. I mean, it's a great gun. Muzzle brake. <laughs> It'll definitely turn heads at the range. It's very loud firearm to fire. Definitely has a big boom behind it. Uh, if you like M1 Grands or FN49s or SKSs, things of that nature, you're, you're going to like this gun. It's uh, it's heavy, but uh, it has no recoil, uh, no muzzle climb at all with rapid fire. Uh, thanks in due in part to the muzzle brake. So uh, I urge you to give it a shot. And like I said, if you already are a Hakeem owner, this single tool right here is your best friend. LibertyTreeCollectors.com. $9. Best $9 you'll ever spend. Uh, you will not break this tool. I know your gas, your uh, muzzle brake cone will be hard to remove the first time you remove it. It's worth it. Trust me, you will pull out all kinds of nastiness out of there. Cosmoline, carbon, you know, just get one of these. It'll be your new best friend. Okay, I think that about covers it. Like I said, leave all your creative comments or suggestions about my videos in the uh, section below. And, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the video. Thanks a lot.